What's up guys? Welcome to the 30 Salmon Android tutorial. And in this video, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at activities, okay? So activities are something that were used a little more heavily in the past before dialogue fragments and fragments came out on Android. However, they still are used heavily and there are some situations where an activity is used more prominently than a fragment, okay? So a activity is something that is that transition the views from from one view to another okay so if you have like sort of like a login screen and you want to take the user to another screen of course after the login then activity is ideal for this okay and in this tutorial the next few we're going to be going over how to pass or how to transition between two activities how to animate between activities and how to especially pass data between activities okay so right now in this one we're going to be doing is we're going to be we're going to make a simple project that takes one activity and takes you to the other okay so we have one activity which is the login screen and we have another activity once you hit the login screen our button that takes you to the second activity okay and another thing i want to point out is the keyboard that pops up after you hit an edit text of course and i've implemented a method to where whenever you click on the outside of it which is the relative layout the keyboard will go away okay and this isn't happening by default so this is the method that i wrote up okay and i'll show you that but i want to point that out to you so when i show you it you'll know what it's for okay and then i just do this because of the fact that sometimes when you got to hit next or you don't have to do that sometimes the user likes to click away from it and it just goes away okay it seems more natural so that being said let's go ahead and get started okay so below is the link for the projects to start up and this is what you're going to have when you do okay so if you don't want to follow along that's fine however if you do then go ahead and download the project and you'll be able to follow along and this is exactly where we'll start okay so that being said let me give you there's a few things that i want to point out with this that with this project that i'm using it's going to have one xml file which is the login screen of course and it's going to have three styles okay this is used for the checkbox this one's used for the edit text the text views and then this one is used for the email button okay so we've gone over all this before of course in the previous tutorials and this is beyond the scope of this video however i did want to point this out that this is what i'm using and these all three are used inside of this main file okay however other than that it's pretty much a startup project okay and then here is the method that when the relative layout is clicked, the keyboard is hidden. Okay, so that's all that's doing right there. Just two lines of code for that. All right. All right. So now let's get started, guys. We have one activity. Okay, so we want to make another activity. That way, when we call it from the main activity, it will transition to the to the activity, the second one. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create another layout. So this second activity is going to have a whole different layout. Okay. And I'll go ahead and call it activity activity2.axml. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to change a few things. Nothing really new. I'm just going to change the background to something a little lighter. Okay. And then I'm going to come down here. And I'm going to add a text. Okay. Now we have a text view in here. And to make things a little easier on myself, I'm going to go ahead and make this a relative layout instead of a linear layout. And I'm going to do that because I want to take this text view and I want to center it in the parent. Okay. And the, the relative layout makes that very easy. Okay. So I'm going to come over to this property, which is center in parent. And I'm just going to set that to true. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the text to just say activity two. Okay. And I'm going to change the text color to black so that we can see it, of course. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the alignment, okay, which is the gravity property. And I'm gonna change that to center as well. So it centers within within itself, the text, okay? So there's our, there's our second activity, not, nothing, not much to it, but it's gonna do the trick. So now that we have the XML, the design for the activity, we're actually gonna to have to make an activity class like how this one is. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and add, oops, Let's go ahead and add a new item, an activity, of course, 
so that we have the includes and all that good stuff already written for us. And we'll go ahead and we'll just change it to activity2.cs, okay? So the first thing we want to want to do in this activity, pretty much the only thing actually, is we're going to want to actually set the content view. So what design does this belong to? And that's easy. We'll just do resource.layout and we'll do activity2, which is the activity that we just created, right? Okay. So that when that pulls up, the on create will pull this up and it'll say, okay, activity two, we'll bind it to that and we'll show that we'll show that design for this activity. Okay. So now that we have that all squared away, what we want to do is we want to set up a click event for the button for this for this login button right here. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's look at the ID because we're gonna need the ID to reference it in the code, which is gonna be button login. All right. So now that we know that, we can come in here and let's create another button. We'll call it M button. Close this and reopen it. All right. So button, we'll call it just button for right now. Something really generic. And let's go ahead and of course reference it. Remember the button log, the ID of the button is button login. Okay. And just like the relative layout, we're going to have a click event for the button. So when it is clicked, we want to wire up a click event. When it is clicked, it will come into this method and do whatever that we specify. Okay. And this is where we want to actually inset the intent. Okay. So we'll call it intent equals new intent. So we'll, we will instantiate a new intent instance. Okay. And we do need two parameters inside of the constructor. Okay. It does have a no parameter constructor, but we want to use the two parameter, which is you want to send it the context, which this will suffice. And then you want to send it the actual activity that you want to call. Okay. So we want to call activity two, which is the class's name. Okay. So type of, and then whatever the class of the activity is in this case, it's activity two. Okay. So that being said, the last thing that we want to do is we want to use an activities built in method called start activity. Okay. And there it is. Okay. So now this will start the activity with the intent of starting activity two, of course, and that will bring it up. Okay. So let's go ahead and try that out and make sure that that is working. So what should happen is the login screen should come up and then we should hit the button and it should take us to the second activity that we created. All right. And there it is. Okay. And notice when you hit the back button, it takes you back to the, to the, the previous activity on the stack. Okay. And in some cases, you're not going to want the user to be able to go back to a certain activity, which is in this case, usually a login screen. Usually once the user logs in, you don't want to have to have them hit back and then the login screen comes back up. You want to simply exit them out of the application. If this is the last application, last activity on the stack. Okay. So the Android operating system takes care of like putting the, putting the activities on the stack, popping them off the stack. However, if you want to do that ourselves and want to say, Hey, this activity is finished so that when the user hits back, the activity that was once there is now popped off and it will not go back to that activity. If there is nothing on the, on the, on the activity stack, then the application will just close. And the way we do that is this dot finish. Okay. So this is the login screen. Now, when we call the activity to go to the second activity, we finish and we kill the login screen. That way, when the user hits back from the second activity, the application will just exit. Okay. Cause usually you don't want the user to go back to the application or to the login screen. Okay. So the user logs in, you know, they put it in the information and they log in and now they're in the second activity. And now when they want to go back, it doesn't take them to the login screen. It simply accepts the application because there's nothing left on the activity stack. Okay. So that is how to do that. 
Now, in the next tutorial, guys, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a look at animating between activities, okay? So you notice that it faded in and out, which is the default behavior of the of transition between activities, but you can specify some other built-in activity or activity transitions, animations. However, and you can even um, specify your own, okay? So we're gonna, in the next tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to use some of the other built-in animations and also how to create your own, okay? So this gives you a little bit more of uniqueness with your application when you are using activities. And then that way, once you see the animations, you can fool around with the values and start creating all of your other, your own animations. And once again, just make your application look unique, okay? So that's what's gonna happen in the next in the next couple tutorials. And the next one after that, we're gonna be looking at how to pass data in, in between activities, okay? Because there's gonna be some times when you want to pass data in between like a username and or a user class or a user object, I'm sorry. And there's, or there's, there's many different ways to do that, but I'm gonna show you some easy ways to do that between activities and Android, okay? So as always, thanks for watching, guys.